Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie Bonomo. Hi if you're new here or hey if you've been here before. So today I'm going to be doing kind of a December wrap up and recap because I realized that all of my end of the year videos kind of went from the end of December right into January. So I didn't really want to put this video off too much longer, but I did want to kind of just recap how the end of the year went for me. And I figured I would split that into my reading, my writing, and my personal life and just some fun updates on where we ended 2020. So without further ado, let's just jump in. First it. off, I gotta say that in the month of December, I actually read seven books and one is not featured on this because it was an audiobook. So I, oddly enough, of the seven books, five of them ended up on either my least favorite of the year or my favorite of the year. So I am not going to really go into heavy details on those books because I already went to detail and sorry guys, they were long videos, but they were much needed. But I will direct you to those in the cards and down below if you're interested in seeing my thoughts of these ones. So first up on the books that I loved in the month of December and the three that made it to my favorites of the year was The Invisible Life of Addie Lou, A Deadly Education, and Deal with the Elf King. This is a fun romantic fantasy. This is an educational school that is in our world but set in a like distinct realm where the school is set and then this is kind of like a literary fiction fantasy historical fiction type of deal and all of these were wonderful. These two are adult fantasies and this one is a young adult but the protagonist is 18 or 19 and there is some mentions of sex so that's just something to keep in mind. Overall I adored these books and this really made my month of reading so worthwhile. Next, we have the two books that did not make it on the best list, and actually both of these made it on my least favorites, and that would be Nerve and Splintered. So Nerve, I just recommend going to watch the movie. The book was just kind of boring, and the characters in the book were kind of infuriating, so I definitely think if you are interested in picking this one up, don't. Just go watch the movie. The movie is better. This book, on the other hand, kind of actually infuriated me and I finally think I figured out that this book is for all the 2007 emo kids that thought that this is what they wanted in their life back in 2007. But now when you're an adult reading it and you're looking back and you're go, oh god, no, no, I don't want that. I don't want to go back there. I don't want to relive it. And that is how this book made me feel because it just reminded me about how much of a stupid teenager I was. And most teenagers are stupid, but like I, I don't want to relive my own stupidity. So I'm, I just recommend passing. Now this is an Alice in Wonderland retelling. I have read a few other Alice in Wonderland retellings and personally I would recommend those much more over this one. And then there were two books that almost pretty much made it onto my best of the year, but I was really trying to cut them down. And these two books were great. And honestly, I think I would have them in a recommendation for books that you should read by black authors. And I do want to take a second just to kind of talk about these two because they have a lot of significance and importance. And I really did enjoy reading them. The first one is A Phoenix First Must Burn, which is an anthology edited by Patrice Caldwell. So this is an entire anthology that has short stories of women of color, specifically black women, and they're just a bunch of different kind of fantasy settings. You have a futuristic sci-fi, you have stories about mermaids, you have stories about vampires, and then you have kind of these snippets of other worlds and high fantasy. And there's such a variety in this collection that I un honestly think that it's so worth checking out. My favorite story of the entire collection, which might not be a surprise if you guys have been here since the beginning of my channel, because I love vampires and Patrice Caldwell's story actually is a vampire one and it was my favorite. It was a really cute sapphic love story between a girl and a vampire and I loved it and it gave me all the feels for like what I missed out on in the vampire era of the late 2000s because we never got any female female vampire stories and I need more of them now that I've discovered this one. There were also a few other ones and there's definitely a few that just didn't really hold my interest unfortunately but that's 
how it goes, I think, with a lot of anthologies. Personally, I love writing short stories, but I do have a hard time reading them, and I think it's just because they're not always going to keep my interest, but there's some in here that are definitely, like, they would be five stars for me. So yeah, go check it out. The second book that I finished, and the last one to kind of recap my December reading, would be Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. This is a book that is in verse, so all of the pages are poems. And I honestly, it's this is the first book in verse that I've ever read, and I'm so blown away that someone could create such a significant and impressionable picture from so few words, which really just, I feel like Jason Reynolds is such a good wordsmith if that's the case, because I felt so invested in this story, and I just felt like I can picture everything. And again, you think about how people can spend three, four, 500, 800 words to like create something and they're great at it. But there's something to be said about someone who can use as few words as possible and still create that mental image. So this story follows a boy who is trying to avenge his brother. They live in a poor black neighborhood and his brother is shot and killed. So his younger brother, who is the protagonist, it believes he knows who killed his brother and is going to go kill that person. So on the way down in his elevator, he starts meeting these ghosts of people who have impacted his life. And these ghosts kind of make him second guess his motivations. Um, this was one of these books that once you read it, you kind of just have to sit back and like let it <laughs> simmer because of how powerful it was. And honestly, it's not a long book. Keep in mind that these are all poems. So you can read this less than two hours without a doubt and i definitely think you should go read it support more black authors support more authors of color and of all own voices and honestly this probably should have made it into my top 10 but i'd read it so quickly and then kind of moved on to the next book and then i realized when i was going through this that i was like oh my god i read that in december so yeah so i definitely just wanted to give this a little bit of spotlight it deserves it so there you go that's that's the real quick recap of all the books I read in December. Honestly, other than those two, it was a great reading month. Now onto the writing. So the writing, which by the way, I'm drinking hot chocolate because it was a little cold today and I wanted something sweet. Anywho, so my writing definitely slowed down in December as I feel like a lot of people, it, it, this always happens to once you come off of NaNoWriMo where you're so heavily focused on writing. However, just because I slowed down does not mean I stopped completely. So after NaNoWriMo finished, I did take about a week break from my story and then I did write a little bit more in my Project Mermaid. That's still coming along. Honestly, that was just something for me to kickstart a project, but my, that's not my main focus right now. So I'm just going to write that when I feel like it. My main focus has been the Prophecy Project, which is my adult fantasy and that is what I more worked on during the month of December. So with the Prophecy Project, I did edit a few chapters. I feel like editing, and if you're in this stage, you kind of know it probably can be slow going because you're adding more things, and especially for me doing a high fantasy. My intention is to build the world up more, to build the magic up more, to just build the characters up more. So I'm adding a lot of words and a lot of context that wasn't there in the first draft. So that's definitely slow going, but I think I edited three chapters during the month which for me considering how much I was like pouring into reading I think that was pretty good. Additionally during the month I believe I wrote three poems and I was very happy with them. I also think I started one but then it didn't really go anywhere so I just kind of let it off and I'm really happy with what I wrote. I they, Two of them are on my Instagram. My Instagram's linked down below so if you want to go see two of the poems I wrote I did share them there. They were fun. They were just kind of whatever the prompt spoke to me that is what I wrote. And because I really haven't talked about this much, I do wanna just, you know, be honest with you guys. In the first week of December, I actually submitted a short story for publication. I had submitted it to a journal that I had previously submitted to one other time, and both times I was rejected. The first time I submitted a story that was set in the summer, and I think that it didn't go with the guidelines that this magazine wanted, because they wanted winter stories and poems. So even though my story was really sad and depressing, it didn't really fit with their guidelines. So I be definitely believe that that led to my disqualification and rejection. 
this time around, I honestly, it was pretty bummed because I really, really loved the story that I submitted and it was more of a personal essay. I completed a meditation that was guided and the guide that did the walkthrough was just so incredible and I just evoked so many images, so much so that they stuck in my brain and I had to write them down. So I did edit that lightly, but I didn't edit it because I wasn't going to embellish anything. Like this was my journey and this was a personal essay for me. So I didn't add anything, but it was relatively short and it did fit the guidelines much better for their theme that they were going for in the spring. However, we were rejected. <laughs> I do think the story is good. It just probably didn't fit whatever they were looking for. Maybe it's just not the vibe they were going for. Maybe they just felt like there was no real category because while it was a personal essay on my behalf in some regards because you are looking the whole story revolves around the morrigan who is an ancient god and some people could say that that's fiction whatever you believe in shouldn't matter but because i have a personal take on a possible fictional subject I didn't really know where to categorize it and I put it as nonfiction and maybe that led to my disqualification. The unfortunate thing is, is that I will never know. <laughs> so we just have my short story and it's lingering around. Honestly, I, I'm almost like, I'm wondering if there was a sign of why I didn't get accepted because I kind of talked about doing more meditations down the road and gathering all of these short stories and then one day like publishing them as like a small collection of personal essays for guided meditation. I voiced it now so maybe this will come true but yeah I we'll see but I'm I'm over it I really was bummed for the first day when I got the email for the rejection but rejection is just another piece in the journey and now we're moving on to bigger and better things. And otherwise, other than those little bits, I don't think I did anything else for my writing in December. So let's move on to my life updates. I really don't think I have many life updates and anything that you guys would want to know, but you can feel free to ask me questions down below. The biggest thing that I will say, um, life, I guess, life slash YouTube was I got 500 subscribers. So Honestly, guys, thank you so much. It is because of you that I hit this milestone. And honestly, I don't know. I don't know if I'm worth 500 subscribers, but I appreciate you. And I'm well over 500 now. Um, well, well, I guess well over to me. I think I'm almost at 540 as I'm making this video. I was at 537 or 538. And like, dang, like you guys really like me. <laughs> but I'm really, really grateful for that. I really don't know other than me just rambling and ranting and making this writing journey I guess this makes it worthwhile for people to watch me but sometimes when I'm making videos I'm just like these are so stupid like why am I making these <laughs> but I love them I just I guess you guys do too so yeah so that was one of my biggest accomplishments of the end of the year and I did not make it a goal officially but I I had like a tier level like I really wanted to get to 300 subscribers in 2020 and I would have loved to get to 500 but I didn't want to voice that out loud because I'm like there's no way 500 people are going to follow me there's just none and lo and behold you guys showed up and came out for me so thank you guys this one's for you otherwise in my personal life I was at my job for my first full month if you've been here the entire year then you know that I left my job at the end of November for a job I was at for three years but I really was tired of driving and going into people's homes because that was the majority of my job I did therapy direct service which meant like I went to them and I loved it and I gained a lot of experience but I was really tired of driving every day all over the place and my poor cars I went through three cars <laughs> with my jobs because both of my my first job and my second job were driving so I was really just ready to sit down and and have conversations in my own office space and in November I was offered a position and I took it so now I have my own office and I've been decorating it unfortunately no clients are really coming in at this time because it's still telehealth but I'm really enjoying it and finally to, at the end of the month I really started to get more clients and started scheduling intakes so I feel like I'm doing my job now which is great 
Otherwise, guys, I don't really think I have any other crazy life updates, but I did kind of want to do a fun celebration for my 500 subscriber mark, and I don't know what to do. So please let me know down below if you've gotten this far in the video and you are stuck and you stuck it out this far and you are one of my wonderful 500 plus subscribers. Let me know down below what would interest you as far as a 500 subscriber celebration mark. Would you want a specific video? Would you want a live stream? If you want a live stream, what kind of live stream do you want? Um, or do you just want to say like, no, we don't want one. And that's okay too. <laughs> if you don't want one, that's fine. But I kind of thought it would be fun. I really love watching celebration videos because I love celebrating with others. So I would also be happy making my own. So let me know down below. And then otherwise, guys... Once again, I post videos every Tuesday and Friday. I live stream occasionally. And you can find all of my socials linked down below as well as my coffee page. I don't really promote my coffee page often, but that is down below. And you can donate me a $3 coffee if you would like. And any of that that I would get, I would use towards my channel. So that would be continuing to improve my equipment, continuing to prove the quality of my videos, and just generally supporting me for whatever I might need in writing slash reading. For instance, I would love to do some more writing and reading experiments. And sometimes that might mean I would have to go out and buy certain things. So that would go towards that. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, I will see you then. Bye.